They gonna love me for my ambition. This is this week's paper bonus snippet. If you're interested in being one of the future snippets, the email is complexambition401 at gmail.com. Send us a message and we'll reach back out to you guys. Have a safe week. Core day. Shout out to everyone out there in the world watching this video. I appreciate you. Again, another reaction, another video to the channel. CA Gang. You guys are much loved and respected. Subscribers, supporters, you guys are family. Go check out the Patreon if you haven't. This reaction is going to be up there, unedited, on Patreon. Lost Boy stamped it for me. I think it's a classic debut project. Overall, is it a classic hip-hop album of all time? I don't think so. Time will tell. It's still fresh. She's still young. Time will tell, right? I don't want to jump the gun. But it's definitely a classic debut. Lost Boy was amazing. Arguably rap album that year Rap album of the year that year 2019 and this is gonna be the follow-up to that three years later We have it Corday from a bird's eye view now this album was very shocking to me the rollout I was very confused if I'm being honest because we do have the Roddy Rich song. We do have parables but those songs came out in 2020 and then after that he dropped an EP with a song with Young Thug, which I liked a lot. But it's like he was kind of skipping steps. Maybe he was trying to see what connected or didn't connect with the people. It was very strange to me, right, this rollout. Because the Roddy Rich song, I think it was strong. I think he could have made it, you know, a single for the album. But maybe it was like a sense of like it wasn't what he wanted or maybe not the direction he was going towards for the album. He just wanted to drop it. I don't know. It definitely kept him out here, right? But it's confusing because now we have this album and we do have Parables. We have the remix to Parables with Eminem, which I'm going to react to first, actually, before everything. And then he does add Gifted, but they're like bonus tracks. Because if you look at the track list, it goes 1 through 12, then it goes 1, 2. So those two don't count necessarily as a part of the album album. The album was 1 through 12, and he wants us as the listeners to listen to this from 1 through 12. But I'm going to start with the bonus record, Parables with Eminem. That way I can listen to the album, 1 through 12. So go check out the reactions separately as well. I'm going to upload it separate with Eminem. Eminem and Corday. Wasn't he on Eminem's album? Killer. Okay, that's what it was. He did, he did the remix of Killer last year with Jack Harlow and Corday. Okay. I would have sworn. I could have sworn there was more to it than that. But let's go. Let's listen to the Parables track. I already heard Parables before. I like it. I've seen the video. Let's now listen to the remix with Corday and Eminem. Eminem, every time he does a remix, he goes off, especially when it's like a newer artist or like a young artist. He tends to kind of address current events a lot. So if he does this time around, it's definitely going to help Corday as far as marketing and attention. But if regardless of anything, it's fucking Eminem. So let's listen to it right now. One of the best rappers of all time. Okay, so I'm gonna skip to Eminem's part because I already heard the song. It's two years old. His first verse is my favorite verse. I just played it. How Eminem sounds on his beat, on his production, on his song. Let's see how this works, man. Seen some shit within my lifetime. At one time, I can still remember just how bad I used to want five mics. My big, it's so hard for me to fathom. This was once my life. Should have thought you'd be like Stakashi. Spit on that bitch like big. Wait, 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 so I treat the beat, I treat a beat like it's Takashi. Spit on that bitch like Meek Mill. <laughs> uh, oh my god! I think the I think Genius has it wrong. Spit on that bitch like me Meek Mill. Eminem calls about blah, blah, blah. 
He doesn't claim to literally spit on Takashi lyrically. I think he, they don't have it right. They have it right that obviously he's talking about the Takashi, Eminem. No, no, the Takashi, 6 9 um, The 6 9 Meek Mill interaction, what happened outside the club, we saw that, right? Meek Mill didn't spit on him or nothing. Meek Mill, though, likes spitting on girls or getting, his, getting spat in the mouth. Some shit. He likes when girls spit in his mouth. It was some weird shit he tweeted. He always tweets some weird shit. So Eminem is talking about that. Which is very interesting to me because it goes to remind you that Eminem is aware of everything that's happening in the culture at all times. Women and men and little kids, senior citizens, to the sickest MP, with Gen Z into a frenzy. That's the reason I'm my Louis Vuitton, warrior than Eva Long. Call my stanza, fan club, cause whoever it's unleashed upon, fucking beats upon. Still got that bullseye on my back, red dot on my head, yeah, blood on my hands. Got him hot on my travel, like my stepfather with the belt. I got swat on my ass, like Obama's kids. I came out on my shelf, I just like a promise this on my mama. That's she hard. What we do is return to the roof, it's more murderous than me. Guess so what you're gonna do? Stick on my nerves, ready for the birds to get through worth of a new worse than me. Who's determined to do permanent damage with the words that I do? Oh, they, they, there's turn no drop to this beat now. Like verbal abuse, language hurt for the use, cursing at you. Made a couple of mistakes that occurred in my deal with telling you about the food stamps and the government cheese and how we used to get school lunches for free. It was mother, little brother, and me. I told you about being kicked out 20 degrees. No more Christmas is mine. Had gifts for us when bro and me discovered that she was wrapping shit up around the house and sticking under the tree. Damn. God bless, bro. God bless. So we have an Eminem's verse feature on Parables, the remix. Very strong way to start the year with this verse, a very long verse. And he's also addressing a lot of the things that if you're Eminem fans and stands, you've been aware of his upbringing. He had a very rough upbringing, but he's reiterating it here, reminding people and then giving it a different perspective that we never looked at it. And like also like little tidbits, like facts of his life, like his mother, literally, they were so poor that she would wrap gifts around the house up and hide them under the, under the tree. Well, wrapping gifts, well, wrapping things around the house and then making them gifts. So like, let's say a Powerade, a new Powerade that you had in the fridge already should wrap it up, you know, might not literally a Powerade, but it's like, it's so sad. Like that idea, she tried her best to be a good mother in certain instances. And that's one instance right there. She tried to make it seem like she was able to buy these kids gifts, him and his brother. But he was going through it. You know, I like that perspective. I like that verse. You know, because like I said before I started the verse, he does this a lot. When he does features, he raps about current events. And he did it in the beginning, but he didn't go too heavy with it. Because sometimes when he goes too heavy with it is where I be like, damn, it's like too much. Like... You know, with the Nick Cannon shit he did previously and all that shit. But I get it. He had to address it, you know. And he doesn't tweet. He doesn't do interviews. So, he's going to talk about it on record. I do like the verse, though, because majority of that wasn't that. The majority of the verse was about himself, his life. You know, get into that sort of dark side. His, mo his mother growing up. I like that. I like that. I like that. Let me try to find another interesting line. You know, made a couple mistakes that occurred in my youth. Jumped a hurdle or two word, but I'm through. The guy was spitting, man. The guy was spitting. Like Obama's kid, I came... Like Obama's kids, I came out of my shell. Like Michelle, Michelle Obama. That's a bar. The guy was spitting. And this goes to show you, like, at the end of the day, however we feel about him... You know, Eminem's corny. Eminem's not Eminem no more. He's too old. He shouldn't be rapping. Hey, to each their own. I have felt that in the past. Recently, I've kind of strayed away from that because I do now sort of kind of get what he's doing. Everything is like a lyrical exercise for the man. Like, he is not retiring anytime soon. He loves this shit similar to Lil Wayne. You know, Lil Wayne's more consistent when it comes to his features than Eminem, but Eminem's he keeps one always around you know he's always around and he goes to show you how much respect he has for Corday to not just do a feature but to do a very long verse and a very you know random thing because it's like a remix of old Corday song so it's not even a part of the cohesive album it's separate from the cohesive album but it's included in the album so you get to get it when you listen to the album it's pretty dope it's pretty dope man if you're just checking out the Eminem reaction separately please go check out the reaction to the Corday album from a bird's eye view 
I appreciate every one of you guys who watched this separately. If you're watching it separately, subscribe to the channel, comment down below, share your opinion on the record. Share your opinion on the Eminem verse more than anything because I like the record. It's an old record. It's an old record, but now we have that new Eminem verse. So share your opinion, especially Eminem stands. I know you guys hate me. It is what it is. I don't give a fuck. At the end of the day, I'm going to state my opinion. I love Eminem. I never hated the guy. It's just a matter of, you know, critiquing his music and, like, just being honest with myself. Now, this was an impressive verse. I love this verse. I don't see nothing really bad about it, if I'm being honest. So, <laughs> finally, a very uh, positive review by me to Eminem. Love you guys. But now, getting back into the Corday album, let's actually listen to the album from top to bottom. Track one, Shiloh's intro. 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 Uh, when I was nine, that my first time I held a nine. And my mother, she was stripping, she was always on his mind. Damn. While my boyfriend, he was pimping, he didn't have a lot of time. I was serving, nigga, 15, Persian, nigga, trying to be a cocaine cowboy. Michael Irvin, nigga, but I still ain't learned, nigga. I was trying to learn, nigga. Trying to put somebody in a grave or earn. I'm 21 myself, nigga, down to 35. He just tried to get his money before he got it down. Cause in my book, my mama raised a man, cause I could've sent him on the dude to get me out the camp. But let my brother tell the story from a bird's eye view. So that's his brother. I was I was literally looking up who is um Shiloh, but he fucking told us right there. That's his brother. That was <coughs> that was dope. I like that. Why is my throat so fucking dry today? What the fuck? Get into the official first song, first track then, because that was kind of like an interlude. John Michelle, probably like John Michelle Basquiat. <laughs> Rockin' record A on this side. Brink of extinction, hell bent on survival. This life's a continuous cycle. And I done dealt with the worst niggas. The type to steal your shit and search with you. Underrated, overhated, I'm tired of the nonsense. I'm my worst critic. Such an overthinker. I'm so self-reflective. Ten thousand hours, penmanship is well perfected. And on my mama, I will die for the right cause. Damn. Stare death in the face with the saddest eyes. Situations getting magnified. The death is the greatest surprise. I see the hate in your eye. Drive by shooters, homicides, and vehicular. Now fuck your art critic. Can't decide what my pictures worth. Sprinkle right. holy water on a tainted cell. My brother asked me how the fuck can he maintain in hell? Okay, okay. I like that song, John Michelle. I like that record. Very strong rapping ability. Again, being displayed. He's talking about his underrated his criticism he's talking about how people feel about him how he feels about himself talking about his brother next record track three super i'm not gonna lie to you i wasn't much of a fan of this song song and video out right now it was i guess you can call it the main single to this album i know sinister came out after but super was like the main single to this album let's see if it sounds good now you know, months later, you know, on the album, I might give it a different, a different, a different listen. Yeah. Last year I made seven million, didn't have to do a single fucking show. All my life moments is a super woe. A nigga Dr. Dre, he got a super bowl. This is real life, ain't no act in it. All these rap niggas, they be Brad Pitt. Uh, like, whoa, hey, I keep that drip on me. My nigga, I'm big homie. Like, whoa, hey, drop top coupe in the motherfucking summer. I rest my case. See, that's the only right part I don't like. Every single breath. Niggas pull up in them Chevys and Beamers. We all young and rich, you can't check my demeanor. Listening back to it now, I remember why I didn't like it so much when it did come out. It's the hook for me. The hook, I'm not too much of a fan of it. Um, I'm not too much of a fan of the hook. That's really what it is. Aside from that, it's obviously a strong beat. It's not even not even a typical Corday sound as well. It very was it it, it much it very was much a experimental track for him because it was like coming in a different type of pocket that he usually does, almost like not pop but definitely like a main like he knew like you knew this was the single right, um but I didn't like the hook too much but other than that obviously he's rapping his ass off his good verses, he's doing his thing his good production, but I don't know I just didn't love the verse, I mean the hook, the hook. But it's not as bad necessarily overall. It's not a horrible record by any means. That's not what I'm saying, you know. But 
even if you listen to the album so far, like I like John Michelle more than Super, you know. But now let's keep it going. Track four, Mama's Hood. I was riding through my mama hood, rolling a Jeep. I ain't playing with you niggas, boy, I'm playing for keep. I bring the whole city out every time that I'm home. Don't forgive me for my sins, I'm just trying to atone. Confident, although I found myself compressed, overthinking, worrying, I must confess. The smartest nigga who had dropped out, fuck your graduation. I think that shit a fucking scam, somebody had to say it. Student loan forgiveness, all my debt was finally paid out. And that power washing van that I just bought for my pops. We upgraded next time that I drop. But for now, I was riding through my mama hood, rolling in Jeep. I ain't playing with you. See, this is hard. This is amazing. If we're gonna be honest, guys, this is a this is like it gives me classic old outcast vibes. Classic like rap record vibes. With still a sense of the youth. And that's what I think he does best because he pays homage and loves everything that's before him. He's a student of the game. But at the same time, when he does drop. And it hasn't been much. That's another thing. You don't have much to judge him on, you know, because he doesn't have much music. But when he does drop and you pay attention, this motherfucker is one of the best. He's one of the best. Is it? That's. Let's hear the second verse. Yeah, I heard the cage bird sing and it's a beautiful sound. When I got robbed in high school, you even flew to the town. Couldn't really live with him. Now I'm living without him. Told me that it was a classic better than my last shit. And now my nigga dead and gone. Shed these tears as I pick this song. Should've got him out, I'll write my wrongs. I paint pictures as vivid because my feelings so raw. This shit I'm dealing with all. Uh, the niggas with the least to offer got the most to say. I was riding through my mama hood, rolling in Jeep. I ain't playing with you niggas. The song is dedicated. It's my dog, Juwan Ross. Killed last summer in a shootout. <sighs> I just miss my dog, man. There we have it. Dope outro. Little interlude. At first, I had to play it kind of bad because I thought that was Roddy Rich. It sounded like Roddy Rich's interlude from his album. Or like a little part of the song that he did. Like a little voice recording type of thing. It sounded... I thought it was, I was, I thought it was the same one. I was like, damn, is Roddy Rich on this album doing the same thing on, on his album? Um, but overall, I think it's a phenomenal rap song from top to bottom with the intro, outro, production, everything about it, the verses, the hooks, the concept, rest in peace to his friend who passed away. And man, there's not much more else to say. Let's keep it going. Motherfuckers gotta recognize Corday, man. This is crazy. Want from me by himself. Track five, track five. <laughs> Talk about a oh. What do you want from me? Life's your biggest fucking test, and this ain't standardized. Quite remedial. Now what would Jesus do? Fishing bread to the masses. Ying to my yang like the feds in harassment. Everything good, my nigga. Like why you asking? My mom still go to work every day. Can't wait till she can retire. I keep it real, and that's what people admire. You lucky on that day? I was acting cool, cuz. I told you I ain't got time for that, but nigga, today yeah, I got time, cuz. Today I got time, cuz. That's a classic, um, a classic, um, fuck. Classic meme from uh, Twitter days back in the day. So here we have Corday addressing everything. The dichotomy of his life. Sometimes you feel like Russell Wilson. Sometimes you feel like Rick James, I believe he said. Could be wrong. But then his mother's still working. He said it on Breakfast Club. Him being honest and being humble. At the end of the day, it's a fact. Maybe... That's the best case scenario for herself. It doesn't define you as a person. Just because someone's a rapper, you don't expect. Or people do expect as fans. Like, oh, put, move his mom out the house. Put her in a mansion, this and that. But that might not be the case scenario. Maybe she doesn't want that right now. You know, put her on salary. It's a different lifestyle. He has a very rich girlfriend. You know, he has a lot to deal with. A lot of a lot on his plate. And I think that's what this record addressed. And it's, it's amazing, man. And I like the fact that the beat is sounds like almost like Silk sonic -y, like an old school, almost jazz, R&B type of Quincy Jones energy, Stevie Wonder energy. And I guess that's why Stevie Wonder's on his album. It makes sense. I fuck with that record. Very diverse. Next track right here featuring Gunna. 
go check out my reactions to Gunna's older projects on Patreon. And also go check out the Pussy Power song with Drake on Patreon. And the Gunna album reactions out right now. Amazing project. This is going to be interesting. Gunna and Corday. We already got um Roddy, Rich, and Corday. Now we got Gunna and Corday. Get that shit on the lane. Tell my brothers you ain't got to worry, I'm going to find a way. I'm shout out to them. I remember them cold nights. Ninth grade chief keep first drop down. Like, why the time had to go? Hey, yo, Gunna is going to kill this beat. What's up, nigga? Can't live average. How the fuck, nigga? Two and seven, three. My cousin told me how to heal. That's why I ain't dead since 10. Taking holy water, giving praise to God like Kanye, Gunna said. Collaboration. You would think it might not work right because it's two different type of cloths. But you got to remember, this is YBN still. Like, this is that young kid. Like, and he comes from that era of the younger kids. A lot of his people in his age rap like Gunna. You know, the mumble rap style. But Corday, even though he's not that type of cloth, he still knows that cloth. And he probably listens to this type of music all the time, Gunna and shit. He's not listening to Nas all the time, guys. Let's be honest. I think that was dope. That was dope to see. Next record right here, his brother giving an interlude. This is a Connect Services prepaid call from... Sean Young. Hello? 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 Okay, because his brother's in jail. His brother's in jail, right? From what I remember in the Breakfast Club interview. So that's his brother. And now we're going into C. Carter. I used to dream about a dodge charger Suicide dog Oh, Coach Carter I think I heard about this one harder. Sitting in the house watching Coach Carter I used to dream about a new hummer Back when good music dropped cruel summer Got this dime piece sucking on my cucumber I ain't doing too bad for a newcomer But that's yeah, a part yeah, of the game yeah. We call life, love is hard to attain I'm Yeah, trained. yeah, yeah, real yeah. Nigga, what I mean is and what I always remain I'm a fucking outlier, I retire these trends Niggas told me I was stupid just for hiring a friend Being broken make you try harder Sitting in the house watching Coach Carter I break free every time that I wake My faith leads and creates seeds And though my days will end next to God I atone for all of my wrongs That was hard to me, I like that record Coach Carter, classic movie He talk, talked about this in The Breakfast Club How he made this song I fuck with that record. Coach Carter, very strong lyrical content, strong verses, strong hooks. And it's crazy to show you, like I said earlier, he's still that YBN. He's still that young kid, millennial, whatever you want to call it, that era, my age. Because he's talking about back when back when good music dropped Cruel Summer. Like, I remember that, right? And that's like a memory to me. But then if you're older, you're like... What the hell? Like, that wasn't so far ago. Like, not too long ago. Like, what's he talking about? But to me, it's like, that's pro that was almost like half of my life ago. Because I'm young, you know? But, so you could be like, back when, it's like a decade ago almost. Even though it's not a decade, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's that concept of, like, looking back. But then it's like, shit that I relate to. And he raps like that. But then, he's not going to relate to a lot of the older people. He sounds like he would, you would think so. But with this young content, like... Coach, like talking about um even Coach Carter, which is not too not it's an old movie, but it's not like a '90s movie or nothing, from my recollection. Let me see, Coach Carter was not that old, 2005, so I was seven years old when that movie came out. I, I like him. Let's keep it going, man. Sinister, the single with Lil Wayne out right now. They tend to hate on you when they can't get rid of you. I ain't going nowhere. Twenty year career minimum. If the bitch bag a dip shot, I'm gonna give her some. Let's reflect times. I try to collect minds from complex rhymes. I'm a time bomb that's waiting to go off, nigga. Quite nuclear. Amazing what fame could do to you. Though. But why bother explaining my feelings? Try harder, but either way they gon' paint you the villain. My flow sinister. This ain't rap. Little tune flow sinister. Sinister. Now, my issue with that song, my only issue, I would say, is the hook, probably. 
My flow sinister. Even though it, it gets repetitive if you play it a lot and you start to like it more. But probably the hook. I think it's a good Wayne verse. I don't think it's amongst his best. He's been going crazy with his features lately. I don't think it's amongst his best like recent features. But it's still strong. But it's not one of my overall favorite records. Especially now that I'm more into the album. Because this song came out previously. But let's finish the album. We got three tracks left. Chronicles featuring her. And little... Little Dirk. Wow. I even gotta hear it. I already know it could be a single. Yeah. Uh, I'm on this road. Told you once, told you twice that I'm indebted. Hey, head up Eliante for that diamond necklace. Hey, hey, huh. I've been traveling around these crossroads. My bitch in the best. Give her designer sex. Since I love is no miracle. I just need love. I need someone to give me more perspective. Y'all don't need no lectures, baby. I just need your presence. And I promise I'm gonna temptations in my past. Yeah, all the times I was tested. Oh, I, I want to see what Dirk does on this. Street nigga buy all drugs, but you made a nigga buy you new titties. I made room. No, we don't spend time. I say I don't stop, but I still do. I'm kill for you. I'm on this road, and I'm not sure. That track was smooth. That track was smooth. I like that track. Him experimenting with the melodies more, singing more. You got her. I thought she was going to be the hook, but he's the hook singing. So that was surprising. And you got a good. A good little Dirk verse, not an amazing verse, but a good little Dirk verse balances it out. You know, little Dirk is always good to put on like an R&B type of track to be melodic, but at the same time rap. It feel like he's like a perfect balance. Like the track he has with Kalani is pretty dope. He always like can balance out these records, and I like how he had them there. That was dope. That was dope. Next record right here, Champagne Glasses with Freddie Gibbs and Stevie Wonder. Damn, he got Gunna and Freddie Gibbs on his album. I'm telling you, man, diverse, diversity. This shit sounds like something off the Childish Gambino album. Conversations getting complicated, I can tell ya. Uh, anybody ever had a problem, gave them hell. I got my auntie, brother's daddy, cousin, backstage passes. If thought the stress free life was gonna come with the money. I was a stolen Roly Prezi, couldn't tell him shit. Arrogance is deadly in it, but shit be getting worse up by the second, I'm guessing. Tell my niggas that I'm happy, happiness manifesting. Can't shit on me, you pussy niggas, it's constipated now. Can't shit on me, piss and sit, trip on me. Play me like I'm pussing you once you in I burn like sifters I got her pregnant once I gave her backstage passes Right with that dirty, I know I shit dirty I'd rather get coke than get blasted Okay, yeah, yeah. conversations getting complicated wow. I That's that Stevie, bitch Woo! Little outro harmonica, outro Sounded like a harmonica Okay, and this will be the last song Westlake High but before I get to the last song, I did like that song, Champagne Glasses. It sounded like a perfect record to me. The Freddie Gibbs verse was definitely short and sweet. It could have been longer, in my opinion. But it was like, damn, we got Stevie on this bitch. We got to get Stevie his part. You don't want to flood it too much. And Freddie did his thing. That's the thing about Freddie. You can say what the fuck you want. Obviously, I joke around online about him as well sometimes. Even not actively, but in my head at least. I get it. But musically... That man is that man. I can't wait for the Freddie Gibbs album. Corday might be on it. Who knows? They might have went verse for verse, uh, feature for feature. But Westlake High is how we end the album. Some mother nature. I'm my nigga, yo, Gotti, that's my Memphis connect. He always put his niggas on, and so I give him respect. Hey, I went to West Lake High with death race rise. And some people go on to waste the rest they lives. Try and move past the lows and prolong the highs. Man, and he cherish these moments, dog. It's like, the highest level for a long ass time, man, as long as I want to. I want to dedicate this out to my grandmother, my late grandmother, God rest her soul. But, um, I'm gonna be here for a long time, man, as long as I wanna do this shit. Everything high level. That is the Corday album, sophomore album 2022, from a bird's eye view. My opinion off first listen, first reaction. To give the rating off bat, out of 10, I'm gonna give it an 8. I think it's an 8. 
comparing it to his last album, I don't think it's better than a Lost uh, Lost Boy. I think Lost Boy was a very strong debut, one of the best rap album debuts by any artist of all time. It's up there, top twenty at least. It's it's it's, it's good. It's a good ass album. Damn near ten, probably like a nine or nine point five. I have to go back and revisit it to be exact, but this is like an 8 off first listen. I think it's better than Earl Sweatshirt's album that came out today. I think it's a strong album, but what happens is there's a couple holes in it, and I'm going to point out the holes right now real quick to end the reaction. To this project, the intro interlude was dope, so you can't count those necessarily as records. That's his brother speaking, incarcerated brother speaking. Those aren't songs. Right, but if we're talking about the songs, John Michelle, Mama's Hood, Want From Me, C. Carter, Westlake High are all by himself. I didn't love the outro, Westlake High, but it is an outro, so I have to chuck it up to being an outro, but I didn't love it. It reminded me of like a graduation, college dropout, like a Kanye West record kind of a bit with the tempo, the beat, and the way he was talking, and then sometimes rapping, but then talking on the actual song, reminded me of some Kanye shit, early Kanye shit, but I liked Coach Carter, I liked Want For Me, I liked Mama's Hood, Mama's Hood, probably my favorite song off the whole album, Mama's Hood, John Michelle was good, Super I didn't love, and Sinister I didn't love, those were the two singles, I didn't love them, Gifted I didn't play, but it's an older song, I, we reacted to it, me and YI, check out, I think we did the music video that dropped for it, go check that reaction out separately, uh, a couple years ago, but now we have new features. The Lil Wayne one was subpar for me. I love Lil Wayne. He might be the best rapper of all time. It's like a five rap race tie for me with best rappers of all time. It could always be sometimes Lil Wayne, sometimes Eminem, sometimes Drake, sometimes Jay-Z, sometimes Nas, but it's always amongst them for me. Kendrick has kind of subsided for me. He used to be up there, but he hasn't been really consistent, and I need I like consistency. Um, Corday here. I think the best features would probably be the Freddie Gibbs one, the Freddie Gibbs one, her as well. But Freddie Gibbs, her Eminem, but Eminem is on the remix to the bonus track, so I don't know if I'm gonna count that. That's my thing. I'm not counting the bonuses as a part of the album. I think he did that to not do a deluxe, and it helps him because he's not really a deluxe artist. I don't want him to see him do deluxe, but at the same time, you want to get streams, right? Because you might be underrated. You want to get as much streams as possible. Let's so let's put your two previous singles, especially a remix version of a previous single with Eminem on it, because you know it's gonna generate streams. It's smart. I think it's smart, but it's not a part of the one through twelve, right? I think it was a strong effort. It could have been better. It left me wanting more. But I don't think it's horrible. That's why I'm giving it an eight. I think it's a it's a I think it's a strong effort. I think it's a, a decent body of work. I think he can go down in history as one of the best of all time, but he has to be more more present. I needed him to drop more. Consistency. I need more music from him. I need more collaborations. I need him on more features. I need him doing more of what he's doing this time around with the freestyle and LA leakers. I need him out more. I need him I just need him more to literally start ranking him up amongst like the the bigger names, right? And time will tell. He has the talent, he has the respect, so time will tell. He's not going nowhere. He said at the end of the album right there that he's going to keep rapping for as long as he wants. Like he's 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 not going nowhere. He keeps going. So you know, and this is a short album. I'm pretty sure he probably has 20 more records that he probably recorded for this album, and he narrowed it down to these. And then doing the EP and then doing the early leaks, not early leaks, but early singles kind of showed you and alluded to that as well. So he has been kind of dropping, yes, but I want him to be still be more consistent. I don't know. I still want more consistent, even bodies of work. I want more consistent, strong records. Super and Sinister leave me kind of like, huh. Like, they could be better. You know, the hooks on both kind of bother me. They're not really perfect like they could be. But this is just music, and I'm being, you know, objective, subjective. Whichever word you want to select is up to you guys, because you're going to feel your opinion about me no matter what, always, every time we react in the comments down below. So whether you're going to kill me or love me, share them right now. How do you feel about this Corday album? I love this interview on Breakfast Club. I think he's an amazing mind right now in music, and especially in hip-hop, and we should pay attention to him as he keeps 
you know, being out here dropping this album, I do feel like people will hate on it for some reason because I just know how people work. I just know how people work. It gives me the feeling like people will hate on it. And that might be me being a Debbie Downer, not being optimistic. But at the end of the day, I'm aware with the culture. I'm aware with Twitter. I'm aware aware with what happens online. I think it's a good album. I think it's a real good album. Rap album so far of the year, you can even argue that. You can argue rap album of the year so far. I don't think it's better than this last album. A, a damn, damn shit. And I think there are a lot of albums that are going to drop this year that are going to be better. Like if Kendrick drops, obviously... You know, you can expect that to be better, the Freddie Gibbs album. So he set himself up for a lot, man, to drop so early into the year. I think he should have waited until towards maybe the end of the year or maybe the middle of the year. But who knows? You know, I did want him to drop. I did want the album. But now looking back at, like, how it will impact his feedback from the people, who knows, man? This is going to be interesting. Comment down below. How do you guys feel? Did I state any hypocritical statements like usual? Did I hate on your favorite song like usual? <laughs> Let me know. The unedited version of this reaction is on the Patreon along with others. Very busy music weekend. I appreciate every one of you guys who watches all these videos. I edit them myself. I go hard for you guys. It's all for you guys. It's for nobody else. Trust me. Not even the labels contacted me for any releases this weekend. So I appreciate every one of you guys. Again, shout out to Corday. Much love to you, bro. Be safe. Blessings to you, your family. I'm familiar with, I think, your grandmother who passed away. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think she was from over here in Rhode Island, from where I'm from, Rhode Island, Providence. So let's connect, man. I would love to chat it up with you at some point. You know, it would be amazing. And, yeah, I appreciate everyone out there. Again, blessings, peace, and love. They gonna love me for my ambition. Ambition. Ambition.